Hey there, it's um, a Thursday morning here in LA and I thought I'd talk to you about uh, physics and how it relates to music and sound and, and, and above all why do strings sound better and why do certain chords sound better and some chords don't. So, so here we go. Uh, hopefully some, if not all of you, most of you have uh, studied the overtone scale in school and what that means and the overtone scale is for every note that you hear there's a corresponding series of notes that are present but not necessarily you can identify. So check this out. Move the camera. You can show the keyboard. So let's see, get a better view here. This is C two octaves below middle C. Okay, in that note, you are hearing a whole range of other notes, which are is basically this. I have to do with one hand. It's like different partials. So all of those notes that I just played are. Or the, is the overtone scale, and that that relates to this one note here. So if I were to push down this C an octave higher, that's the first partial of this note down here, and I just hold it down without striking it, the string will vibrate sympathetically. Check out how loud that upper octave is when I just hit a short note on the fundamental. Okay, hopefully you can hear that. Now, you can do the same thing for, for this, the first and second fundamental, which is, uh, which is the octave and the fifth. I push them down without striking the key so, so the dampers are not on it, and then I hold it down with the, the center pedal. So those hammers on those notes are, are suspended, and look what happens when I hit this first note. So what's, what that means is, is that the low C is then has these two notes of the fifth and the upper octave, but they're ringing be sympathetically because of the overtone that's being spit out by this low C. And so now you can go this another direction and say, well, uh, what happens if I take this B here, which is not an octave, and I still strike this, this note on the bottom, it doesn't ring the same because this B here is not part of this overtone scale. So, what does that have to do with Mozart and strings? If, if, you, if you ever listen to a, a Mozart uh, orchestration, everything is perfectly balanced. Turn this around. Personal here. Everything is balanced in, in a Mozart orchestration. So what that means is the overtones, as we just described, are pushing out sound in a live room and they're affecting all the other instruments around them. So uh, it's just kind of a, it, it's impossible for a three octave unison, which would be, and if you make that the top note the violin, second note, uh, note the violas, and the cellos on the bottom, it will always sound great because, because the violas are supporting the violin and the cellos are supporting the viola and the violin by having this be the fundamental of its own um, overtone scale. So this is really physics in terms of how sound vibrates and affects other bodies that it's close to, as opposed to a synthesizer, which may or may not have recorded on a sample uh, the, the, the overtones and the upper partials that, that you can't necessarily hear. You've got to have a great mic. It has to be played well on a good instrument. <coughs> so, so that's why some voicings sound good in a, uh, a sense capacity and, and why you can't necessarily translate that specifically to a, a go back and forth between live instruments and synthesizers is because how does the overtones relate to one another in, in the, the room that you're playing in, the bodies that you're sitting next to, so on and so forth. So uh, I'll, next time I'll give you some examples about uh, uh, different specific string voicings and and why some sound good and some don't. So hope that's interesting and we'll talk to you later. Bye.